That was triumphant. Thank you, sir. Yes. Good morning. morning. Welcome to Temecula United Methodist Church. My name is Drew Davis, and it is my absolute privilege to celebrate with you today. I'd like to share uh, just a few names. I'd like to welcome uh, Joanne and and Vladimir and Gail all to worship with us today. Vladimir is a good old friend of mine, and I'm glad that you're here today watching my our whole my whole life circle from church to church it, it's good to be able to, to have those experiences again and again so let's welcome everybody is here and stand as you are able and pass the peace of Christ with those around you Please join me in the call to worship. Praise the one who lifts up the widow. Praise the one who brings down the proud. Praise the one who restores our fortunes. Praise the one who rebuilds our lives. Amen. Amen. You may all be seated. I'd like to ask my young friends to come forward and join me if you're willing. And if not, I'll stand up here and, and talk to you. There we go, not so nervous today. Y'all saw me trip last week when I got up. Can you share with me some titles like responsibilities? Someone that's a helper. Can you tell me a person that's a helper? You're 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 who? Your grandma, that lady right there? Yeah, your grandma. Who else is a helper? Your mom? Well, your mom, Jesus, yeah, who else? Who else is a helper? Angels? We all have angels. Look out here. Look at all these angels out here right now. There's so many helpers in our lives, and sometimes we're not always aware they're there until we absolutely need them. And sometimes somebody comes over and says, hey, how are you doing? That's an angel. And somebody, sometimes somebody comes over and say, hey, I made, and what did you say your grandma made? Tamales. I made tamales. Yeah. And that's an angel too, especially when she shares them with the pastor. That's a good angel. Yeah. But we have all these angels in our lives, and sometimes we have special moments that we might be a little sad, 
and those angels come and make us happy. Yeah. So let's pray for all our helpers, okay? Dear God, thank you for the people that help us and how they represent your love. Amen. All right, have fun with in, in Sunday school. Our friend is right in the back waving at you. Have a great morning. <laughs>
or for gifts. And here's a Santa quilt with all the little children of the world. And it has a sleeve on the back so you can stick a doll or a rod through it to decorate your wall or your porch or whatever. And this is the Opportunity Quilt. You can buy tickets after church. And you can win this on December 1st. It's the Christmas Village. And it's got all kinds of embellishments on it. So come outside and look at it up close. The tickets are $5 or you get five tickets for $20. All the money goes to Prairie Square so we can keep buying supplies and repair machinery and stuff like that. And I have one more thing I want to show you. We also have table runners. This Tuesday, I'm going to be teaching how to make paper piece items. If you're interested, see me after church. This is an example of a paper piece table runner. So we're going to have all kinds of lovely things for you to purchase and support Prison Squares. We really appreciate all of your support. Okay, as we continue in our time of prayer today, I'd like to start with a special Veterans Day prayer. And this is very important and special to me. I get to stand up in front of you and share every Sunday from my heart because of our veterans. I get to be a liberal loudmouth because of our veterans. I have rights and liberties that others don't have because of our veterans. So I'm not going to, well, if you're able, I, I am going to. If you have served in any level of service, even as local perfect, uh, protectors, uh, fire department or police or what have you, would you mind standing up for a moment? Thank you all for that. I'll talk about this a little bit during the sermon, but Friday morning I stood in a place and did some things that would have had me killed in other countries. And I am grateful for you that I was able to do that with freedom. Thank you. Precious and loving God for all of our veterans, thank you. Thank you for the protectors that you have brought our ways that make us possible to be who we are. In your son's precious and loving name I pray. Amen. We'll move into our time of prayer quilts today. And we have two again this weekend. One this weekend. Closer to me. That's what it sounds like when the microphone bumps against my stole. So these prayers are for Sam today, who is on a cancer journey. So we'll hold out prayers for Sam. At the end of the service, when you go out and see the quilt, this will be hanging as well for you to tie prayer knots in each one. So let's go in together in prayer today for our prayer quilt. Precious and loving God, be the hands of care and comfort. Precious God, be the shepherd in all ways. Precious God, in this place of worry and, and concern, be on the journey. In your son's precious and loving name, I pray. Amen. And as we move into our time of our prayers from the community, as we pray for Veterans Day, as we pray for the numerous fires everywhere and the devastation of the fires, as we pray for our future leaders and all the ways that we need care and they need care. What other prayer requests? What what other prayer requests do you have today? Yes, Ishma. World world.
world conflict, world conflicts. Any other prayer requests? Safe travels, travel and mercies. Yes, ma'am. I, I admire your your persevering spirit. I I don't think that I could say brain brain surgery as as freely as as you have. Okay. Well, we'll be praying for you. I yes, sir. Yes. It does. It does. Many prayers. I also want to share a prayer of numbness as well for many reasons. Grieving, loss, change of expectations across the board. Let's join together. Oh, I see a hand. I'm sorry. Helen, please. For Fred and Joe, who are um, his grandparents. Yes. prayers. Yes, ma'am. Yes, I have to tell you some good news. Yes, Pauline is no longer at Temecula Valley Hospital. She is now moving into a care center that will do the next leg of her of her caring. On Friday, Adriana and I went to go see her and she spoke a lot to Adriana uh, Karen shared with me they sang Amazing Grace together. So we are having some fantastic progress for Pauline. Yes, but still keep praying for him because even with the progress, there's still a long journey ahead. And the 15th, November the 15th, these flowers are for Earl and Pauline's 66th wedding anniversary. Yeah, so many prayers for that. All right. Yes. Yes, sir. One more good thing for reminding me. Nellie and I have our 28th anniversary yesterday. Congratulations. I'm glad you remembered today. <laughs> Let's join together in prayer. Precious and loving God, within all these things, it's good to have laughter. Within all these things, it's good to share our tears. Within all these things, it's good to feel numb. Precious God, within all things be. In your son's precious name I pray, amen. And as we continue in our time of prayer, let's share together in a prayer that the Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. In 1886, so the story goes, 
A young man by the name of Carl Burberg was walking home from church following a wonderful service. The story says he marveled at the birds singing, and before he got home, things changed. A thunderstorm blew up, and torrential rain came down. Just as soon as the storm blew in, it blew out. The sun reappeared, and the birds began to sing again. With that inspiration in mind, he sat down that evening and penned what we now know as the great hymn, How Great Thou Art. Around the worship center today, the wind ensemble have spread themselves out as if to send you these words of encouragement from the outer corners of the earth. God still rules, and he is a mighty God. They will play the verses. I'm going to ask you to join me in singing the chorus. The words will be on the screen. If you prefer to follow along in your hymnal, you may. It's hymn number 77. Now sit back and let these words encourage you, and I'll bring you in for the refrain. Together. Then sings my soul, my Savior God. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to
final chorus. And then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior Feels like my soul's going to crack open. That was just so wonderful. Thank you so much. Our scripture this morning is from the Gospel of Mark, which is our earliest gospel written sometime after Rome destroyed the temple and part of most of Jerusalem. And so we hear these first words from the first gospel writer, Mark 12, 38 to 44. As he taught, Jesus said, Watch out for the teachers of the law. They like to walk around in flowing robes and be greeted with respect in the marketplaces and have the most important seats in the synagogues and the places of honor at banquets. They devour widows' houses and for a show make lengthy prayers. These men will be punished most severely. Jesus sat down opposite the place where the offerings were put and watched the crowd putting their money into the temple treasury. Many of the rich people threw in large amounts, but a poor widow came and put in two very small copper coins worth only a few cents. Calling the disciples to him, Jesus said, Truly, I tell you, This poor widow has put more in the treasury than all of the others. They all gave out of their wealth, but she, out of her poverty, put in everything, all she had to live on. May we be blessed by these words and the understanding of them. Before we get into the prayer for the day's sermon, I do have one more announcement to share with you. Each year, the first Sunday of the month, we have a church-wide celebration here. And following the the service today, there's going to be a meeting in room six. If you would like to be involved in any way in preparation or the planning of that, please see Anita in, in room six for some conversations towards our big Christmas uh, celebration. It, can you believe it's November? <laughs> can you believe that we're only weeks away from Thanksgiving? This another year has rocketed by. I watched this precious child that I remember as a baby turn 21 this year. I watched her sibling turn 16. And it's amazing how that time just starts to rocket by. Well, let's take all the chances that we can to to celebrate this year. And uh, please see Anita uh, in 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 room six after the service for those conversations. Let's join together in, in prayer. Precious and loving God, be with us in this time of conversation. Be with us in this time of reflection. Help us to see an individual who gave their all, even though it wasn't the most, but it was their all. And help us see the ways that we can do that as well. In your son's precious name I pray, amen. I have been preaching for almost 20 years. And in my 20 years of having a blessing of standing in front of a congregation and sharing a message, this is the first time that I have ever preached after a major election. The first time. 
In 2016, I was the associate pastor, so I didn't preach that Sunday. The lead pastor did. In 2020, it was 2020. And we were still trying to figure out what worship would be after 2020. Today is the first time that I've ever stood in front of a collection of friends and have spoken after a major election. I want to share with you how special this moment is me. I have shared in many places, in many ways, there's 25 minutes of my life that I am the most me. There's 25 minutes of my life that I feel the most freedom to be me. I feel a connection to the Holy Spirit like I never do in any other place. And it's my greatest blessing that I get to spend that 25 minutes with you. Thank you for being a place where I can just be within the Spirit, be with you, and be in conversation. I want us to think about what that means in our lives. I hope that you have that place somewhere, anywhere, that you can step into and be the most you as possible. I hope that you have a community that you can sit around and let your guard completely down, say some things that your wife wishes you didn't, and just be completely you in that moment and sit in the peace and comfort of that. I hope that you have that place. I want to celebrate that place with you today. I want to celebrate with you in places like the widow in this scripture in Mark today, who didn't come in and give the most, but she did come in and give everything. I want you to have those places. I've never claimed to be Billy Graham. I'll never give the greatest sermon ever given, but I will give you my absolute best. When we hear the songs in the day with, with how great their art, speaking of Billy Graham, I think of George Beverly Shea that sang that at the end of every one of Billy Graham's crusades. And there's this spirit that existed in this room when I heard the instruments and the voices blend together to create the most that we have today in the spirit of music and love. Today, I want you to think about where you exist for your 25 minutes, and you are allowed to be absolutely you. In this scripture that Marlene read today, that's what happened with the lady, the wid widow. She was able to be absolutely herself. She didn't come in and pretend to be anything greater or anything less than who she was. She came in with a gift that was absolutely, completely her. And she gave her absolute, complete most to participate in the journey. A widow grieving and loss and pain, and in the words of our dear friend today, numb in her feelings, but came in and gave her absolute most. I want you to have those places in your life. As I stand here in my 25 minutes to share with you in this place that I am absolutely the most me, I know that many of you have come in as you in many different ways. Some of us are in here in a place of celebration. Some of us are befuddled and confused. Some of us are just numb. And the beauty of these places is that we can be within a community that's greater than us and be in this place as our absolute complete selves. We are able to sit in this room in this bevy of emotions, whether it be celebration, grief, or numbness, and we can just be together. 
We're facing a unique opportunity today. Today and my first time preaching after in a major election. Once upon a time, I thought the scariest day to preach was Mother's Day. <laughs> because you either don't say enough about someone's dear sweet mom, or you say too much about parenting from people who had parents that didn't live up to their names. In every situation, in every place, we come and we stand together and we exist in this challenge to truly honor who God has made us to be, whether it be in celebration, grieving, or numbness, and also be in a place that we are able to turn to others and say, I'm here for you wherever you are. Thank you today for being in this place. I shared in children's time this morning an image of what it means to be humble. We have been working on Wednesday mornings during the Bible study this course by Dr. Adam Hamilton, who is a pastor at the Church of the Resurrection in Kansas. And he has been going through this imagery of kindness and humility and compassion and what it means to exist in kindness, humility, and compassion when we also sit in rooms that we need to be completely ourselves, but we sit within the differences of celebration, grieving, and numbness. This past week we looked at the word humility. And I want to break those words down in all the different ways that they can be shared because humility is important as we try to sit together in these places of celebration, grieving, and numbness. To be humble means to not flaunt or to show off. As I stand up here in my fancy robes <laughs> that Marlene just preached against in this scripture today. Not to flaunt or to place ourselves above others. We are challenged to be the helpers in other people's lives. And to be a helper is not to step in and to show how much more you have than another person. To be a helper means to come along and to stand right next to an individual, whether that they celebrate, grieve, or numb. It's trying to create an equal footing to stand side by side, face to face, if we're six feet taller than another person, lifting them up so that we all stand at the same levels of care and peace, to be the people that are willing to not take advantage of what we already have, but to make sure that those who are in need are cared for, to be the helpers. As we talk to our young friends, we talked about the grandmas that make excellent tamales. We talked about the moms, the dads, we talked about the grandparents, we talked about the teachers, the coaches, who at times step in and humble themselves so that others can find their importance as well. I used the phrase, the helpers, today very intentionally because it's a word my favorite Presbyterian minister used as he talked about what it means to help other people. My favorite Presbyterian minister named Fred Rogers. And as we think about what it means to be humble, to not place ourselves above others, to be the helpers that lift others up, I'm not even going to pretend I can use those words. I'm going to let them share them for you himself. So if you'll play that first video for me, please. There are people in the world who are so sick or so angry that they sometimes hurt other people and they're usually the ones who end up in the news but when we get sad and angry you and I we know what to do with our feelings so we don't have to hurt other people when I was a boy and I would hear about something scary 
somebody getting badly hurt or something like that, I'd ask my parents or my grandparents about it. And they would usually tell me how they felt about it. In fact, my mother would try to find out who was helping the person who got hurt. Always look for the people who are helping, she'd tell us. You'll always find somebody who's trying to help. So even today, when I read the newspaper and see the news on television, I look for the people who are trying to help. We're constantly challenged to look for the helpers. We're constantly challenged to be the helpers. If we live lives in humility, that we are humble towards others, we don't celebrate too loudly. We don't whine and cry if we are in places of loss. But we cry and hurt when we're grieving. And we're even respected in our places of numbness. And we just find ways to sit together and be together. It leads into the next word that connects to humility and it's humanizing. We're called to help people to realize that they are human beings. Not setting them apart for any differences. Not speaking down towards anyone because of who they love or where that they love or things that they love. But we sit with other people and remind them that they are special, beautiful creations by God. And sometimes the differences in their lives is what makes them the most human and the most to be loved and respected for. Over the last few weeks, listening to the campaigns, we have heard a lot of dehumanizing language. And it's hard to hear that over and over again. I think about the words of Fred Rogers in this video. And we can see hurt because hurt is what's sexy to show on the news. We hear the ones saying the negative things. We hear the dehumanizing language. But sometimes we miss the ones who are out doing things to care. There's great agencies that have not stopped caring even through all the dehumanizing language, the United Way, the Trevor Project, all of our friends at the LGBTQIA plus community center, our churches that have gone out to be the voices of peace and not the voices of divisiveness, being voices of care, trying to be the softest voices in loud rooms because sometimes it's the soft voice that scares us the less and it's the soft voice that makes us feel the most human. This past week, our bishop, Dottie Espinito Frank, put out a video and her video pointed towards the necessity of humanization. It pointed towards the necessity of not celebrating too loud. It talks about the necessity of sitting by, side by side with those who are hurting and grieving and numb. And I want to make sure that you've heard it, so we're going to play that video right now as well. Hello, everyone. It's Bishop Dottie Escobedo Frank, and I'm coming to you from St. Simon's Island, Georgia, where I'm at Epworth by the Sea uh, United Methodist uh, Retreat Center. And I'm here with the Council of Bishops. But I wanted to take a moment to say to you that I am with you. And that after we have gone through this uh, election, this, the results of the election last night and today, I wanted to give you a word. Uh, the first word I want to give to you is it's okay to feel whatever it is you're feeling, the sadness, the grief, the broken dreams, hopes dashed. It's okay to feel that and to grieve and to let your soul be restored and healed in the next few days. Don't rush that, that process, let God work in you. And it's okay to grieve for those who are being harmed in this world, in this time and, and care, care for them continuously during this time. Those who are frightened, those who are worried about their children and grandchildren, 
those who don't know what their future holds. And for those of you who are pleased with this election result, I'd like to ask for your kindness and your gentleness for those who are grieving uh, in our country. Remember that uh, winning is not bragging, that in our way of thinking of the world, we win by loving each other well. So in this moment, please, please be kind with your neighbors and with those who are suffering and grieving at this moment. Our scriptures give us all kinds of things to remind us to stay hopeful and stay centered in who God is. And Jesus said, peace I live, leave with you, not as the world leaves. My peace I give to you. So today, I ask that in the middle of the storm or in the middle of the joy, wherever you are at, reside in God's peace. And, and may your life be surrounded by love so that other people can know who God is. And remember in our conference, we continue on. We are working to end spiritual and physical hunger, and we will continue that work every day that we are together. I'll be home soon. I'm praying for you, and my heart is with you. God be near you. I'm quite blessed by our bishop to share hard things at hard moments at hard times, not knowing how one thing would be received and trying to find even a middle ground where the middle ground no longer exists. As you think about everything that you have seen and observed over the last few years as you worry or celebrate what's next, the necessity of humanizing our community is important. No one is less than. Everyone deserves respect. As we juggle these things with dear friends who are grieving today, with dear friends who are celebrating today, as we look for a middle ground that's almost invisible, we have to continue to look for Christ. It made my heart jump when the young lady this morning looked at me and named the name of the main helper, Jesus Christ. I think about all the times that the main helper went in the places of intense division and became the one that set the example of what humility is. Speaking to others not about his grandeur or excellence, but using those who were acknowledged as the less, less thans in the moment, as the examples of the most. The Samaritan, the lady by the well, the lady caught in adultery, the lady who came to the table asking for the scraps of the master's table, calling the children forward for their voices to be heard much like our young friend who proclaimed Christ's name this morning during children's time. We can spend time trying to fight towards the middle ground, or we can spend time being the visible difference in the world. Some friends will be upset with me that I didn't invite them on something on Friday I woke up very early and I said, there's a place I need to be today. And it just happened sporadically. I went to go stand at the duck pond again. Just me and a flag and a sign. And the sign said, you matter. The flag was the LGBTQIA plus flag for our siblings who are in grieving and fear today. But the sign said, you matter. When we try to sift through dehumanizing language, we forget that others matter. And sometimes we become louder about it because we forget we matter. And as we try to humanize our siblings, we have to see that all of our siblings matter. And I stood there that day, and I'll share with you, and I watched this car make a U-turn, and my, and my inward voice was like, oh, crap, I wish Ann was here. 
<laughs> but the voice that came out of the window was, I had to make a U-turn and say thank you. This lady was storming across the street. And my voice said, oh crap, I wish Ann was here. And she walked over to me and asked me for a hug. I woke up at two early in the morning hearing the voice of the Holy Spirit telling me to go out and humanize our county. I'll do that again someday. But I want you to do it. I want you to do it in your different ways. You are going to find yourself somewhere with someone in their 25 minutes. And I want you to celebrate with them in their place that they are the most themselves. I want you to celebrate with them the places that they feel like that their voices are heard. And precious God, if you're in some place that it is not their 25 minutes and they feel silent, I want you to make sure that they know that they are heard. Because that's what this lady did, Marlene, that widow. A widow, a lady, with no husband to give her an identity, with no caregiver to help her, the less than of the story walked up and gave everything she had to care. We need to be those people. I think I'm going to stop talking. God be with you. As we have friends dealing with other catastrophes in their lives, our giving goes today to UMCOR, I assume most of these funds will go towards fires, uh, so just please give so that we have those. And as Adam shared, as you also give for change, let's be the change that celebrates other people's 25 minutes. Amen. of your love to share your grace with the world. Amen. As we move into our closing hymn today, it's not in the bulletins, and I was hoping that we could sing this a cappella today. I want us to feel the spirit in this room. The, the orchestra did a great job of that earlier, having that music come in and cast over the community by playing at all sections.
Thank you for having those tones and that music pass over us today. Today, as you hear this song, and if you haven't, I'll sing it for you once, and then we'll sing it together. I want you to fill the tones of prayer as we sing this. I'll sing this first verse for you. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, O Lord, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, and renew a right spirit within me. Let's sing it together. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, O Lord, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation and renew a right spirit within me. Amen. Before that, we move into the closing benediction with, with remorse. I remember another prayer request that I need to share. We need to share a prayer for George Wirtz and his wife who will be put on hospice today. And uh, just please be in touch with, in prayer with George. Uh, they are going to be with her today. And the hospice community is coming in to be with them today. And it really is not expected to be long after that she moves into that. So please be in prayer for George today. Amen.